Good morning, everyone. I'm Father John Kelly. We're so happy that you're joining us at St. George Church, our virtual worship. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn 432, Oh, Praise Ye the Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson is from 1 Peter. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, Come to him, a living stone, through, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying a, sto a Zion, a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness save me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and will be forever. Amen.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do not know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son, and in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord, I set a watch before my mouth and keep the door of my lips. Let my word be seasoned with salt that it may minister grace to the hearers so that the words that are heard are yours, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Their names were Sean, Alexis, and Rosie. Each has a developmental disability. Sean has autism, and Rosie and Alexis both have Down syndrome. I was in my third year as Director of Religious Education at a large suburban Roman Catholic parish in Cincinnati. Our religious education program had exploded within those three years from 400 to 600 children, with an additional 600 in the school. In prior years, special needs children had been sent to the parish down the road for instruction. Rosie, Alexis, and Sean's mothers had come to my office the previous year saying, this is our parish, and you said all children are welcome. Well, God helped me keep that promise. Two special education teachers in our parish stepped forward, and the joy class was formed. Now those mothers came to my door again. We'd like our children to receive their first Holy Communion this spring with their peers. Well, I knew the church policy. According to the guidelines, special needs children, there were three qualifications in order for them to receive. First, they had to reach the age of a discernment, which was eight. Check. They had to participate in formal pro preparation. Check. And they needed to be able to distinguish between communion and ordinary bread. I knew their teachers would prepare them well and their families were very committed. My reservations were in how these beautiful special children would be treated by the community itself. The parish was composed of yuppies, young upwardly mobile professionals many of whom who had been on vacation from church since teenage years. This particular group of First Communion parents contained a large segment of what may be referred to as yippies. 
And they yipped about everything that wasn't their choice, their children, or getting their own way. And although they were unable to receive their classroom instruction with their peers, I was determined that Sean and Rosie and Alexis would participate with the rest of the children in every group activity, including our Jesus Day retreat and parish liturgy. The retreat consisted of storytelling, art, liturgy planning, baking bread, and a practice for the Mass. With 150 children, we had four retreats with approximately 37 children in each. These were then divided into five groups, rotating through the various activities. There was an adult leader for each group and the parents were invited to observe. I meandered about keeping a vigilant eye. Rosie was a little redhead, full of vim and vigor, and she had a gift for engaging anyone and everyone in conversation. During the planning session, I asked the children, what's a homily, a sermon? They all sat on the floor with their thinking caps on. When Rosie jumped up, the judging parents sat in the back of the room abuzz with who knows what and paused. Rosie spotted the other little red-haired girl in the group, Cindy. Cindy was very smart and very timid. Hey, you, Rosie shouted, pointing at Cindy. I know you know this. What is that thing? Cindy stood up, her face almost as red as her hair. It's, it's so, sort of like when the priest gives a book report on the gospel. Rosie's face beamed. Yep, that's it. I knew you knew it. During the bread making, Alexis stood off in a corner, unwilling to participate and muttering. Each time the parent in charge gave an instruction on kneading bread, Alexis would say, that's not the way my mom does it. Finally, in exasperation, the adult baker turned to her and challenged, okay, you explain it. With that, Alexis stepped forward, picked up the bread, and started working with it. She turned to her classmates and began showing them and telling them how to knead the dough, just so. Each child picked up her own piece of dough and began mimicking Alex as she guided and affirmed them. Again, the yippies, advent vigilant and ready to pounce at any perceived infraction, were silenced. At the end of the day, it was time to practice a processional and recessional for the next day's liturgy. I gathered the children and lined them up two by two. I was careful to explain to the children that they needed to walk closely next to each other, but they didn't need to touch hands or hold, or hold hands or touch each other. For as a wise DRE, I knew what all second graders know. Boys have cooties. We practiced walking slowly, bowing at the altar, turning and then walking to their assigned pews, joining their families who would already be seated. Lauren, a cute little tomboy in pigtails, was assigned as Sean's partner. What's wrong with him? She questioned me right in front of everyone, his mother, his teacher, and the ever-present, ever-vigilant Sanhedrin parents. The teacher gently explained in words that the children and the parents could understand. Sometimes Sean gets distracted from what's going on and sort of gets lost. Oh, like when I'm watching cartoons and my mom has to yell at me to get my attention? Yes, sort of like that. We sometimes have to help Sean pay attention. They did well together. Lauren matched her steps to his, and Sean followed each direction precisely. I breathed a sigh of relief as I dismissed the children to their parents. Before I went home, I met with the priest and told him how our three special needs children behaved and were welcomed by the normal children. I noted that there were still some parents who were not convinced that allowing these children to participate with their normal children 
was the right thing to do, they were most likely reserving their judgment for the actual event. I went home feeling confident that the next day would go well, fingers crossed and a multitude of prayers offered. Sunday burst forth with sunshine and a promise of God's grace and glory. The children were dressed in their Sunday finest, the girls in white dresses, little veils or rings of flowers in their hair, the boys in suits or jackets with dress shirts and ties. I shooed the parents off as we began our procession from the school to the center aisle of the church. The procession was led by the altar servers with the priest at the end. The parents' and grandparents' eyes glistened with tears as the angelic children moved in unison. Just inside the main sanctuary was a skylight. The radiance of the sun breaking through gave the appearance of a halo around each child. Those heavenly rays captured Sean's focus, gluing him to the spot. Two rows away, I held my breath. Within those frozen seconds, which seemed like hours, I knew disaster was upon us and that letters of complaint were already being composed. But I had not counted on the astuteness of Lauren. In stride, she slipped her gloved hand into Sean's and led him down the aisle to the altar where they bowed in unison and she delivered him to his parents' pew. Then she took her own seat with her parents across the aisle. The lump in my throat caught as I saw tears on the faces of the adults around me. Father Tom began his mass by welcoming the children, their families, and all of us who had come to share in the body of Christ. He began his homily, his book report, by saying that he had been a priest for many years. But today, this weekend, these first communicants, these precious children, had taught him more about being community, more about being Christ for one another, more about true presence than all his classes at seminary. That happened on the fifth Sunday of Easter almost 30 years ago. Rosie, Alexis, and Sean are almost middle-aged. And in my mind, they'll always be those jubilant eight-year-olds receiving Holy Communion for the first time with their peers. Over the years, I've thought of them often. In our epistle reading today, Peter was, of course, speaking of Jesus when he wrote, the stone that the builders rejected had become the cornerstone. I see a parallel in how Jesus had used these children, these not quite normal children, as cornerstones that day. And Peter further tells them and us, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Today is Mother's Day. There is no other job more heartbreaking or rewarding than being a mother. Old Testament stories identify three characteristics of a truly good mother. She is a woman of prayer, a woman who is faithful in worshiping God, and a woman of integrity who keeps her promises. Those are the characteristics God sought when he chose Mary to be the mother of his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Those describe my own mom, who inscribed my prayer book and life with these words. May your faith always be as strong as our love for you. And then she showed me how to live those words. The mothers of Rosie, Alexis, and Sean came to me as women of prayer, faithful in worship, and desiring to keep their promises made at baptism, to live the faith and raise their children as Christians. Scripture says if we are to live our lives in such a fashion, we will be a blessing to our children and God will be well pleased. I encourage you all both women and men, especially in this time of COVID-19, 
Be strong in prayer, faithful in worship, and keep your promises. For we know that our Lord truly is the way, the truth, and the life. Happy Mother's Day, and may all of you be blessed and safe. Amen. Please join with me in reciting the tenets of our faith as found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We offer special prayers today on behalf of Mother's Day. Loving God, we give thanks today for mothers. Thank you for mothers who gave birth to us and women who have treated us as their own children. We thank you for the good women in the present and in the past who have cherished and protected the children among us. May we all offer that same love, fairness, wisdom, and joy. Help us continue to raise and to support our children that they may be the people they were born to be. We need your comfort here today, Lord God, during these challenging times. Today there are missing mothers and there are missing children. Comfort those who have lost their child, who have given up their child for adoption, or who have chosen not to give birth. Comfort those who have longed to be a mom and cannot. We pray for those whose mothers have disappointed them. We ask for grace in relationships where there is pain and bitterness, for healing in relationships where there is abuse and violence. Help St. George to be a place and space where people may feel mothered, their gifts and talents appreciated and nurtured. We pray today for mothers around the world, mothers who cannot presently feed their children mothers who are homeless, mothers who must teach their child about pandemic and loneliness. Help us create a world where mothers may raise their children in peace and plenty. God of mothers who created mothers, who came as a child and had a child, hear our prayer this day. Amen. I ask your prayers for all who are facing the coronavirus for all who mourn their dead, all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined or stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, those who fear the present and the future. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. And so we join the angels and the saints and angels in proclaiming your glory as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of your Son by means of this holy bread and cup. We show forth the sacrifice of his death and proclaim his resurrection until he comes again. Gather us by this Holy Communion into one body in your Son, Jesus Christ. Make us a living sacrifice of praise by him and with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them and feed on them in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Everyone, please join with me as we pray. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that they may always be united to you. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, Bestow upon you the riches of his blessings, and the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.